they are not going to be worth the amount of gold that you're paying. Howdy folks, welcome back. More TSB content and today we are talking about the age-old question of Tap Sports Baseball, perhaps the hottest commodity and most difficult to acquire. That's not exactly true, but it is one of the most important items in this game, and that is your gold. You see it up in the top right-hand corner of the screen every single time you're playing Tap Sports Baseball. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about where to use it, how to spend your gold in the most appropriate ways that will benefit you the most in this game. This video was actually inspired by a comment on one of my videos. I finally have comments on my videos. Thank you guys, very much appreciated. This comment is from Joe, who said, could you do a video on how to spend your gold and what you should spend it on? So thank you, Joe, for the recommendation. And yes, I absolutely could make a video on that. I was very happy to get your comment. And honestly, it's a very good question. I think it's a really important part of this game. And I think it has a couple of good answers to it. I will say the one thing about this question that is important to know is that it is sort of subjective. There are a lot of different ways to use your gold. I think people will probably have somewhat different opinions on what you should go for. It can depend on what stage of the game you're at, what your team looks like, things like that. So what I've done to make this a little bit easier is divided it into yes, maybe, and no. Yes would be things that I would almost always agree you can use your gold for and it's probably worth it. Maybes are sometimes, it depends on you, it depends on your team uh, here or there, or maybe something that could be beneficial, could not be beneficial, who knows. Uh, and then the no category is pretty much what I would say. It's probably not the best use of your gold. You can probably use it better elsewhere, and I'll explain why that is. The first thing that I would say is almost definitely worth using your gold is right here on this screen, and that is player packs, boxes. They're called boxes, technically speaking. I just call them packs. You can get pretty high overall players without spending a ton of gold. So if you come up and click on the percentage button right here, you can look at the percent chance of getting some of these players. So you have a 33% chance of pulling a four and a half star player. And those players are 290 overall. That's a pretty high overall player. Let's say you're going through these boxes and you say, oh, I really need a first baseman or a third baseman. And oh, maybe I need an outfielder or a shortstop or a second baseman. By the way, you see that Ozzy Albies? Already maxed out on gold. I pulled him twice. I pulled him twice. I'll put it, I took a screenshot of the second time. He was like a 2%. And I pulled him two, two packs in a row. And of course I wasn't recording, because why would I be? Naturally, duh. But anyway, if you go through these packs and you see, hey, there's somebody that I might want, it actually might be worth using some of your gold to try to get one of those players. Now, the one thing I will say is if you log on to this game, you will get a lot of these as gifts. They will give these box packs as gifts pretty often. So what I re would recommend doing is uh, putting on your notifications for this game and you can get a lot of these boxes for free. But sometimes, hey, look, you don't pull up a player in one of these packs and you want to open a couple on your own. I think that's a totally good and reasonable way to be spending your gold because if you need to upgrade a spot on your team, that's the best way to do it. So definitely recommend using that. That definitely goes into the yes column. The second usage of gold that I would say goes into the yes column is on upgrading your players. If you get a player like this where you have to switch them tiers, so if you're trying to get them from the bronze tier to the silver tier, or the silver tier to the gold tier, the gold tier to the platinum tier, whatever it may be, uh, you actually have to spend some gold and some Evo tokens to make that happen. That can add up, right? So going from silver to gold uh, tiers is 100 gold. If you have to do that 20 times or whatever it is, 22 times, yeah, it's gonna add up. That's gonna be about 2,000 gold. But I mean, realistically, it's worth it because as you increase in tier, the challenge is going to get a lot harder for all of those different modes, walk-off hero, uh, bonus games, things like that. It's gonna be more difficult to win. So it's really important that you're staying leveled up. And look, at the end of the day, I mean, it's kind of the name of the game, right? <laughs> is keeping those guys upgraded and playing and trying to win games. So at the end of the day, it's a pretty reasonable way to be spending your gold. Before I move on to the maybe tier, I wanna let you know that if you enjoy Tap Sports Baseball, I actually would recommend that you subscribe. And hey, you can give me a comment after you subscribe, telling me you subscribe. If you notice the first comment in this video, that was a subscriber. And we're also gonna be talking about another comment in this video who's also a subscriber. So if you wanna be featured on one of these videos, highly recommend you subscribe, give me a comment, 
And uh, I also uh, would just love to have you playing along with me. I feel like I say that every video, but really I truly do because it's really fun to see other people kind of taking into a hobby that I enjoy. So feel free to subscribe if you enjoy the Tap Sports Baseball content. Okay, on to the maybes. So the next portion is the maybe category, like I mentioned, and the first thing we're gonna talk about actually comes from another YouTube comment, like I just said. This one comes from Nathaniel Haley, who has sort of a synopsis of this. This was actually a reply to the first comment, um, but at the very end, I thought he said something very important. He said, also moments are huge, so spend gold on that as well. Moments are something that I think I overlook uh, well, actually, I know I overlook in this game, and I'll explain why. But I actually don't think that I should. Because if you come to your team, and you go to the Moments tab, you can look through these different moments, and you can see most of these moments are going to give you boosts to club points for bonus points in those club events. Let me say that again. I'll just read it right off the screen. How about I do that? Boost to club points when bonus points are scored. So in club events, you can get boosts when you use these bonuses and you have players that apply to these moment cards. So for example, I have the Rangers, the Rays, and the Diamondbacks. These are just from the base moments packs that are in the store down here, the moments box. If you have a player on your team that matches up with the moments that you have, in these little things. So for example, I would need someone who plays for the Rangers, who is a batter, who is either right-handed or left-handed. If you have one of those players, it will give you a boost in those bonus games. Uh, unfortunately, right now, I don't have any. Uh, and I actually didn't start doing this until I saw this comment because I sort of just overlooked it. I didn't really go into great detail with it. So I don't have any players that apply to this right now, but it can be really beneficial. If you take your club events seriously and you need that extra boost to kind of help you out, because sometimes it can be difficult if maybe you're not pulling some of those bonus players, this can be a really great way to get some more bonus points if you maybe only pull one bonus guy from a box or something like that. On top of that, as a little bit of a throw in, I would include the X Factor skills. Um, again, not something that I have used yet, um, but their boxes are very cheap, as you can see right here, only 50 gold per box, and you're able to get those X Factor skills. And let me come over to my team and I'll show you here real quick. As you can see, I don't use them, but if you look kind of right here underneath their player placard, you can add X Factor skills to these players and it's just little boosts that you get uh, not that dissimilar from the other little boosts that kind of come attached to the card but you can add your own on top of that if it's something that maybe you go I, you know i could use a little bit more of a boost um, i would say definitely use it for that the second maybe that i have is actually not exactly related to the game but it is something you can spend gold on if you come over to the game day tab and you go to uniforms you can actually click right and you can get your team's limited edition uniforms now this is in the maybe category and i can understand why somebody might be going why would you ever spend your gold on that it's 500 gold and you already get uniforms that you don't have to pay for so why why would you do that well, look, here's my logic. Honestly, this is a game. This is your hobby. And if you really like the uniforms that are here, why not spend 500 gold? You can get that gold back. It's not gonna be gone forever. It's like the price of one box. So if you really like these uniforms, then I say, yeah, maybe it's worth doing it. If it's gonna make you enjoy the game more, I think that you should go for it because it's just something a little fun that you could add into your playing experience. Now, I will say personally, I don't like them uh, because I prefer the regular pirates uniforms i think the gray script font is awesome so i don't do that but you can and i think you should if you think it'll be worth it 500 gold you can get back quite easily i promise you so that is it for the maybe category and then in the final category the nose let's go back to the store the first thing i am going to say do not spend your gold on is the player draft pick packs let me explain why they are not going to be worth the amount of gold that you're paying. Now, I'm not sure how much the number one draft pick packs still cost. I think it's probably like 250 gold or maybe 300 gold a pack. As you can see, these first round draft pick packs are only about 100 gold a pack, but it is absolutely not worth getting because look, so if you look at the first round draft pick pack, out of a thousand chance, you have a 0.5% chance of getting a five-star player in this pack, and that's 100 gold. So, oh boy, I should not have put myself on the spot with this math, but let me try and do it real quick. And then add 66 and two thirds percent. Oh, never mind. That's not, that's not as hard as I thought. So for you to statistically have the most reasonable probability of getting one five-star player from this pack, 
you would have to open 200 first round pick packs, which would be 2,000 gold, 20,000 gold. And then you add Kurt Angle to the mix? Yeah, that would be 20,000 gold to open these packs for the probability of one five-star player. And that five-star player, by the way, Edwin Diaz, for example. His max overall is 268. I have players that are not five stars that have higher overall maxes than him. Kevin Newman, Kevin Newman. I guess what I'm saying is it's not useful to be spending your gold on these packs because if you're trying to get better players up front, you should be pulling these boxes because after just a few days, they rotate these boxes so frequently that after a few days or maybe a week long, they're probably gonna have at least one of every position in these boxes, and they're probably gonna be the four or four and a half star card. So you still have the opportunity to get a decent player who's probably a higher overall, and you have much better odds of pulling that player in the first place. So I really don't think it's worth spending gold on these packs. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. The other thing in the shop that I would say is not worth spending your gold on is basically anything in this boosts tab. Now I kind of went over bonus games already in a previous video and I'll have that card up in the top, but I would like to include all of the other things that are in here to varying different degrees of don't spend your gold on this. Franchise player coins are, in my opinion, worthless for what their actual purpose is. I've never ever used these players. I just don't like them. I don't like reusing them and, and having to go back in and get them again. I'd rather just have my own players. Now in a pinch, maybe, or if there's a position on here, which at this point it's just outfield and first base, feel free to use the coins because you know, I have 152 of them. I'm probably never gonna use them. But my point is to not buy franchise player coins with gold, because look at this. It's a thousand gold for a 10 pack of franchise player coins. What that means is if you come back to player, you go to franchise, it costs two coins per five games. So you would get these players for at max, what, 25 games? Is that what that is? For a 10 pack of franchise player coins, which is a thousand gold. So it's like a rental. Why would you rent whenever you can just go to a mystery box and pull these backs and have a player guaranteed for the entire time that you need them. Now, the other two at the bottom, I think are a little bit different. Um, energy drinks, I also don't think are very useful. Um, they're basically there to help rejuvenate a pitcher who is maybe a high overall. So maybe if you don't have a good reliever or something, you can use one, but I don't tend to use them very often. And when I need them, I usually have a lot. I have 71 right now and that's all I really need. I would say probably the most credence out of those three is probably the ice wrap. And the reason I say the ice wrap is because maybe you pull a bonus player and you wanna use them for a club event. You pulled a starting pitcher, for example, and you need to keep playing them over and over again so you don't wanna to have to play one game, play four more, and then play that one more to get back to that point. If you wanna use ice wraps for that, it's really more just like a time save than anything else, but you won't burn through as many bonus games and I can understand why that would be useful. So I don't think that that's the craziest thing in the world that you might want to use that for. But honestly, that only comes up every once in a while, at least for me. So I've found that I don't really have to do that. I'll just kind of run through my entire catalog of ice wraps and then it'll just slowly build back up over time. So by the time I want to do that again, I'll be back at a reasonable level. So I don't think it's worth spending the, the gold on these ice wraps. And then the final thing that I would say is in the don't category is in your team upgrades. So we talked about player upgrades earlier and that was in the yes category, but in the team upgrades, I would say do not use your gold for this. So if you go to your team and you go to improve and then upgrades, you can upgrade these different sort of qualities of your team, I guess would probably be the best way to put it. And you can either use cash or you can either use gold. The reason why I say don't use your gold is because you can use your cash to do this. And personally, I've always found it's a lot easier to get cash than gold. There are more ways to get the blue cash than there are the gold. Just playing the game, you end up getting a lot of cash. I have 2.3 million cash, which isn't a ton, a ton, but it is a pretty good amount. And I just don't think it's worth it to be spending your gold, especially because every time you use your gold, it only goes up like 1% for this, so if you were to upgrade this, I don't know, 10% or so, you could be spending like upwards of a thousand gold to do that. And it's really not worth it at that point. I would say use your cash, slowly upgrade this stuff if you don't have a ton of cash, but I wouldn't recommend using your gold on that. I also wanna give you two reminders about using gold 
uh, in this game that I think are really important to sort of keep in mind. The number one thing is that you can always get more gold. So maybe you do want to use your gold on something uh, that I mentioned as a don't. Hey, you really want to get a 10 pack of ice wraps to do some bonus challenge or something like that. I'm not saying that you can't do that and you can absolutely always get more gold. And that's kind of what I meant with when I was talking about the uniforms back, right? It's 500 gold, you can get that gold back. But the other thing on top of that that I think is important to know is I would say rule of thumb is save your actual real life dollars on this game. Whenever I download the game, I find the smallest bundle that I can possibly get or the smallest deal. It's usually like two or three bucks and I buy that because then that gets rid of ads <laughs> for the whole game. If you're able to do that or care about doing that, go for it. But don't be spending your hard earned money on this game all the time. Look, I understand it's a hobby. And if you enjoy playing this game, trust me, I do too. And if you want to spend your money on this game, your hard earned cash, go for it. But I would just say it's not the be all end all. If you're younger and maybe you don't get paid as much money, maybe you don't get paid money at all. They'll be stealing your parents' credit cards for this game. I promise you that's not a good idea. Don't feel obligated to spend money to get gold in this game, I guess is my point. You don't have to to enjoy yourself. It's all about what you make of it. I don't spend money on this game and I have never had a problem enjoying myself with this game. I still have a ton of fun with it and I still get a lot of good players and a lot of cool cards that I really enjoy using. So don't feel obligated to spend your actual cash on this game. Anyway, folks, with that being said, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you subscribe if you enjoyed and if you have another idea for a video like Joe did, uh, feel free to put it in the comments and uh, maybe I'll take a look at it. Maybe I'll, I'll be able to... Maybe I'll be able to make a video and give you some of my thoughts on a different topic. So thank you guys so much again for watching. And as always, take care.